Hey there, it's Steve and Connor from Serious Keto. And in this video, I am going to review, finally, Keto Chow, along with Connor, who will give us his non-keto perspective. I get a lot of people asking me to review Keto Chow, and up until present, I have said no, mainly because I'm a foodie. I like to cook, I like to eat, I like to enjoy a meal, and I'm not really on the go that much, so I don't really have a call for sort of an instant keto meal. What are your feelings on meal replacements? Some of them taste like sickly sweet. Just mm-hmm. the, they don't taste right. Yeah, a lot of them will have like a grittiness to them yeah, too. Just... I, you know, I think back to like Carnation Instant Breakfast, which I think came out 50 years ago or more. And then things like Slim Fast replacement drinks. I've had Metarex before. Like I remember when Metarex first came out, that was like drinking concrete. Interesting story on Keto Chow. The creator of Keto Chow, Chris Baer, originally created the recipe and just put it out on the internet, like open source. Anybody could take it, make it, whatever. And people said, well, could you just make it for us and put it in a packet? So he did. And we have one such jumbo packet right here. You have a shaker cup. What's in that? Uh, Snickerdoodle and mocha. 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 And we got uh, a chocolate. Salted caramel, vanilla, and strawberry. It's all sort of dessert flavors. Yeah, they also make some savory, like soup type stuff, but uh, all we have are sort of the sweet things. In terms of the instructions, it says we're supposed to add a fat source, heavy cream, melted butter, and or oil. I know that you're not that thrilled about that idea. Yeah, it's not great. Then we add the powder. Then we add uh, one and three quarters to two cups of slightly warm water and then mix. And then it says stick in the fridge for at least 30 minutes, though overnight if preferred for better flavor. Now I did this with two batches, but I thought for your benefit, for the non-keto thing, we would do the first one, just we'd whip it up right in a shaker cup with some almond milk. Okay. Now in your opinion, using a shaker thing, do you put liquid in first? I put the liquid in first. Liquid in first, all right. So we've got some homemade almond milk. Through the magic of editing, we will speed up this process. All right, you ready? Okay, shamrock shake. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I don't know what what, fla- what flavor is a shamrock shake. I've never had one. Oh, okay. Also looks like that milk from episode eight. It's pretty good. There's a little bit of the chalkiness, but I think, you know, we didn't really follow the instructions. We just mixed it instantly and didn't right. let it sit for a half hour. I would say when it first hit my mouth, I wasn't expecting what it tasted like. I don't know how to describe it, but then once you swallow it, it's pretty good. It tastes like key lime. I'm interested to see what the others taste like. Right now, um, I think it's just, it's good. It's not, yeah. it's not great, yep. but it's good. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't shake this very well. Did you do one with butter and one with cream? Yep. Okay. So next up, we have lemon meringue. So this one sat overnight, or you just whipped it up? Uh, this one has been in the fridge for about a half an hour. Okay. And this one I made with a half a stick of butter, which is one of the ways you can make this. Once you make it with a half a stick of butter, this gets... Fatty. Rather seriously keto. Yeah, calories go up to 530 in, uh, in a serving from, you know, just 125. And just, just kind of your standard protein scoop real, calorie, calorie. We really ratchet up the fat, too. 46. 46 grams of fat. That's, that's some keto for you. If you drink the whole thing. Yes. Which, okay. That's... I saw some butter chunks, it looked like, in that. That butter may not be the answer. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the butter chunks. This, this looks kind of gross. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. This needs to go into a blender. Yeah, I let that hit my mouth and I don't want it anymore, so. Shaker bottle didn't do the trick on this. The lemon flavor does taste pretty good, though. I'm going to put this in a blender and give this another shot. Okay. All right. I whip this up in a blender. It's looking pretty frothy on top. That'll happen. Mm. 
The lemon meringue is a really good flavor. I think with the butter, it's not, it's weird for me. It is buttery. Yeah. The um, lemon meringue though tastes really lemon good. Lemon meringue flavor is, it's very good. But I don't think I will ever make a batch with butter again. No, if, I guess if you're like one of those super keto people and you're all about this, then it would work. It's just, as much as I love butter, drinking butter just feels a little bit odd to me. Yeah. The lemon flavor, though, is very, very good. I agree. So the next one that we're going to do after I rinse the glasses, I did with heavy cream, and it sat for probably an hour and a half in the fridge. So this is the chocolate chip peanut butter, and this actually has a little bit more in the way of carbs. This is 2.3 grams of net carbs in an entire serving, which is a full shaker bottle. This is, it tastes like a chocolate peanut butter shake. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it tastes like. That is really, really good, I think. Yeah. And no grittiness. I got no grittiness mm -hmm. at all. So I think, I think the key on these is make them with heavy cream, put them in the fridge at least 30 minutes. The longer, the better. It's going to be smoother that way. I'm going to have to try out some of their other flavors and see what I think of them and maybe even try them in some baking applications. In fact, if this video is short enough at this point, I may just tack on a chaffle at the end and see how that cooks up. So now I have the peaches and cream flavor. I don't know what I think about this. There's something about it that reminds me a little bit of like a hand lotion or something. It's kind of like uh, a foo-foo frozen cocktail, but missing the alcohol. I think maybe with some orange juice and some vodka, I might enjoy this more. As it is, this is not the best flavor. In fact, this is my least favorite flavor that I've tried so far. The next flavor I'm going to try comes care of Rachel and Joe over at Two Crazy Ketos. They developed this along with Keto Chow. It's Caramel Macchiato. This is one that I wish Courtney were around for because I think she would love being in on this taste test. Ho oh, oh. ho. That is some good stuff. This actually has me wondering if instead of using water, if I used coffee to make this, ooh, I bet that would take this to a whole nother place. Great flavor. Rachel, Joe, awesome job. So since Connor is not a fan of chocolate, I brought in my wife, who is a fan of chocolate. I like chocolate. You can be able to, no, hey, whoa, 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 wait. Oh. I was still talking here. <laughs> All right. So, so, yeah, what you'll do is we'll each uh, we'll drink and then tell us what it reminds you of. Okay. I like this. It tastes like my malted milk powder. I like uh, when the kids were little and still I uh, make malted milk shakes with uh, milk and ice cream. And this exactly tastes like it. So. Totally. I mean, <laughs> this, this reminds me of a McDonald's milkshake, but better because I don't know if there's any malt in it or not, but man, good Tastes stuff. It's like malted milk powder, yes. It's very good. So for the next flavor, we're gonna do vanilla, and I've got my wife, Terry. Hello, good morning. Anyhow, this is the vanilla keto chow. You did the chocolate previously, right? Yes. So, see what you think of this. It's vanilla, uh, what it's is not it? as malty. No, it definitely doesn't have that sort of vanilla malt, malt. taste to no. it. It um, it reminds me of. I, I think I know. I think I know what it is. Remember those Licka sticks? You know, you had that little uh, stick that you dip into then the the uh, powdered pouches of flavor. You know, oh, so it's like, like a cool, yeah. Yeah, it was like a like cool, a like a pixie stick, but not a pixie. Yeah. Yeah, the powder was like a pixie you stick, but it, then you had the yes. the stick itself which had maybe a little bit of a marshmallow taste to it. Um, that's the sort of sort of bland vanilla that I think this is. It's, yeah, it's it, bland. It's bland. not like a, you know, vanilla can have a real 
bland flavor, you know, hence sort of the adjective, you know, it's vanilla, or it can have like a really robust taste. Like vanilla flavoring. Like, like, like a vanilla bean vanilla or something bean, like yeah. that, yeah. Um, it's this is good, I like I, it, but I would plain. I, I would call it okay. Yeah. So not a fave. Flavor. It's plain. The next flavor I'm gonna try out is mocha. This tastes like melted mocha ice cream. In fact, I wanna make some ice cream with this right now. All right, I don't think that's gonna get any thicker. Transfer this to a little Rubbermaid container. And because I'm not patient enough to wait for that stuff in the freezer, I'm gonna have a little bit that I scrape from the sides off the ice cream maker. That is pretty tasty. I predict a lot of keto ice cream this summer, care of keto chow. This was just way too easy. So we are about to try the root beer float flavor. You're a root beer fan, right? I like root beer, yes. Okay, excellent. Before we do that, I want you to try out the ice cream that I made yesterday. Okay. That's mocha, so I don't know how you feel about that, but here you go. Well, I'm gonna feed you, or how's this gonna yeah, work? Go ahead. All right. Well, like it's chocolate, chocolatey. Yeah, with just a, like a little bit of a hint of coffee. A little bit, because I'm I don't I'm not a coffee drinker. And well, did you like it? Yes, I like it. Yes, okay. it's mocha. It's All good. Right. Well, then let's do the keto chow root beer float. Mm. Yes. Root that beer. is like an A and W yes. root beer float. Yes. So the cool thing I had is. And I wasn't expecting this. I just thought the flavors were gonna kind of merge, but you can distinctively taste both the root beer. And the ice cream. Yeah, totally. It's good stuff. Mm. Yeah, that is uh, very tasty. Another, have this. another winning good flavor. for summertime. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm back with Connor for the next taste test. Connor, what is your favorite cookie? Probably a snickerdoodle. I already knew the answer to that, but they didn't. Well, now they do. And now we are going to try the snickerdoodle flavor of keto chow. And I think, I don't know if the fact that it's your favorite is a good thing or a bad thing, because you probably are going to have a higher standard for it since it's your favorite cookie. Haven't had one for a while though, so. Okay, well, we'll see if this scratches the itch for you. Okay. Here we go. It's pretty good. I think it tastes more. Yogurty. It's sort of like a vanilla yogurt, That's almost. That's what it tastes like. Vanilla yogurt with cinnamon. And not a whole lot. It's a little light on the cinnamon, mm -hmm. I think, to be so a snickerdoodle. It's at the end. I think this is actually a better vanilla than the vanilla that they make. Yeah. It reminds me of drinking, um, is it kefir or kefir? Yeah. I don't, I'm, no, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong both ways. But like that, it's, it's got that very pleasant mouth coating to it. Right. I actually almost prefer the yogurty taste over some of the other ones. I think because of the thickness, that's what you're used to when mm -hmm. you drink the kefir, the thickness and the yogurty taste, and that's what this reminds me of. Now, you felt that some of the others were a little bit salty. What do you right. think about this? This one, not so much. I think this one's a little more balanced. But some of the other ones, like the key lime pie one that we tried, was a little salt forward. This is very tasty. It's just, to me, not enough snickerdoodle. I just, I feel it could use a little bit more cinnamon. It's good. I, I think it's one of the better ones we've tried. Cool. All right, so I have Terry back with me. This is gonna be our last taste test. This is not, by any means, all the flavors that Keto Chow has. They've got, I don't know, at least, I'm guessing 20 more we haven't tried, but we don't want to turn this into an hour and a half long video. So this is going to be the last one, and it's a special request from my wife, 
who likes mint chocolate chip? It's my favorite. <laughs> I do not like mint chocolate chip. No one else in the family likes mint chocolate chip. I don't like grasshopper pie. I don't like mint chocolate chip ice cream. I don't like Andy's candies. You like all those things, I right? I love Andy's candies, yes. Now, the one thing I do <laughs> like, I do like the Girl Scout Thin Mints. Okay, so that's yes. my one concession that I will make to chocolate and mint. So are you ready? Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> so the color on this is a little more gray than I expected. I expected it to be a little bit more bright green, you know, kind okay. of like an Andy's candy or something like that. But who cares about the color? Let's see yeah. how it tastes. Pink. I that it. <laughs> it's Andy's can. I, I, I think that is total Girl Scout Thin Mint right there. More Andy's candies for me, but I like I it. So. Yeah, I totally good. Not too minty, enough chocolate, but it still it has a malt flavor. It it the mint kind of seems to almost ramp up at the end, sort yeah. of a, a stronger minty aftertaste. I was so prepared to hate this. No, it's like the ice cream when you put it that green mint ice cream. That's yeah, very good. So you're naming all the things I don't like, yet I like this. Well, see, you might like ice cream and Andes and you don't know it. <laughs> I don't know. I like this though. It's very good. <clears throat> so I'll be back in just a second with my closing thoughts on Keto Chow. See you later. When I went into this review, I was fully prepared to dislike Keto Chow. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm a foodie. I like to cook. I find the notion of a meal replacement somewhat distasteful. And then I tasted this stuff and it's good. I mean, there was only one flavor I would say that I disliked and that was the peaches and cream. The vanilla was a little bit bland, but then I added a scoop of Perfect Keto strawberry collagen powder to it and it went to a whole nother place. It was really transcendent. Now there are still probably close to 20 flavors that I didn't review in this video, and I'm looking forward to trying those out and experimenting with them in some cooking applications. I'm really looking forward to trying out some of the savory mixes that they have. I've already got a couple ideas for that. If and when I do future videos on Keto Chow, it's going to be more about how to use it as an ingredient rather than just a meal replacement. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't address a couple of the concerns that I suspect people are going to have about Keto Chow. The first is that as a sweetener, it uses sucralose. I personally do not have an issue with sucralose, but those that do will often cite a study that was done on it was mice or rats, but they were given an extraordinarily large amount of sucralose over an extended period of time, and it damaged their gut biome. I'm going to include a link on the Keto Chow site just so you can calculate how much Keto Chow you would need to consume at your size and weight to equal what these mice were given. For me, I believe it came out to right around 70 servings of Keto Chow a day. The other concern I think people might have is price, because each packet of Keto Chow is just a shade under $5 before any sort of volume discount or any sort of coupon code. And if you're thinking just in terms of like a protein shake, yeah, that's expensive. But this is a legitimate meal replacement. When I drink one of these shakes, I feel full, like fully full. I don't normally eat until I feel full. I eat until I feel satisfied. And about half a shake gets me to satisfied. So when you think of cost on this, think of it in terms of an actual meal. And I think back to when I worked at GE and it was just meetings and calls all day long and maybe you had 15 minutes to run down to the cafeteria and get a burger or something. I don't know that I ever got out of the GE cafeteria for under eight bucks. And I'm sure what I ate wasn't nearly as healthy as Keto Chow. Now to help offset that cost a little bit, I will include another link down below in the description. This link will get you 10% off of any purchase at Keto Chow. It is not stackable, however, so if you're already buying something that's on sale, you can't get an additional 10% off. So I'm gonna end this video the same way I started it. I'm a foodie. I like to cook. But sometimes convenience is important. And not only is Keto Chow convenient, pretty much every flavor I had just tasted great. So I'm a convert. I'm a fan. Give it a try. See what you think.
Thanks for watching.